Hey Lady is an online community where women from around the world meet to practice speaking English together. It's the easiest way to find English speaking friends and to get regular practice, the practice that you need to speak English confidently and fluently. Hey Lady is a safe and supportive space for women with an intermediate to advanced level of English. Come and visit us at heylady.io and discover the English speaking version of you today. Well, hey there, I'm Emma from mm, English. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to show respect in English because it's something that my students ask me often because they've realized that in English, we don't have many specific words or pronouns to show respect like lots of other languages do. So I'm going to go over three main things in this lesson, how to greet people in a respectful way especially people who are older than you or your boss or manager, your lecturer, people that you respect and you want to show respect to. I'll also show you how we address people respectfully and how in English our actions are often more important than words when we're communicating and we're showing respect. If you want to be part of the English community and get notified as soon as a video goes live, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. Turn on notifications. And of course, if you enjoy this video, you know what to do. A little while back, I made a lesson about how to be polite and show respect in English. It really focused on how to say no politely, how to make polite requests and suggestions. But it did get me thinking about showing respect in English because many other languages have really specific pronouns or ways to address older people or people who you respect. My Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese students will all know how important those pronouns are when addressing family members or people who are older than you. I mean, it's built into your languages, isn't it? So how do you do that? How do you show that same respect when you're communicating in English? Uh, we don't have many pronouns that show respect in general everyday language but you can show respect in other ways. And the most important way to show respect in English is by greeting someone properly. It's gonna set the tone for the whole conversation. And most people choose to greet with a really informal, hello, hi, hey, casual and friendly way to say hello, right? Perfectly acceptable greeting. But if you deliberately wanna show respect to someone, you can make your language a little more formal. You can say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All of these expressions are really common. You know them, but just by choosing these greetings, you're instantly sounding more polite and showing more respect. And if you're meeting someone that you respect for the first time, you might also add, it's a pleasure to meet you. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to meet you. Just remember, you wouldn't actually say good night when you greet someone, right? Because good night indicates that you're leaving. It's a little more like goodbye. All right, let's talk about addressing someone with respect. I know in lots of the Asian cultures where I've lived, there have been specific pronouns used to show respect, especially when you're referring to someone who's older than you, you might say, auntie or uncle. How do you show respect in your language? Do you have some similar pronouns like this? Something that you use to show respect to those who are older? Let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear from you. Like I said, in English, we don't have many specific titles that immediately show respect, but there are some exceptions made for certain professions. So we address doctors by saying Dr. Jones with their surname. Maybe for some professors, you might do the same thing, Professor Saunders. In a formal situation or definitely at school, we would use a certain title followed by a person's name. So it would be Miss Emma Jacoby or Miss Jacoby for a woman, Mr. Smith 
or Mrs. Smith if it was a married woman. Now some teachers, and especially teachers at language schools or even tutors at universities, they may just prefer you to call them by their first name. And if you're unsure about what to call them, you can politely ask them by saying, how should I address you? Should I call you Mr. Turner? That way you'll find out exactly what they expect and what they feel comfortable with. Now what I do want to talk to you about are the titles that are not often used and sometimes can seem so formal that they make people feel a little uncomfortable, especially if they're used in the wrong context. Sir and Madam or Man are not very common in Australia or in the UK. However, they may be heard a little more often in parts of the US, especially in customer service or with people who are involved in the military. And I know that for some of you, it might seem strange or even a little rude to call your manager or your boss by their first name. You might instinctively want to refer to your boss as boss. Good morning, boss. Can I help you with that boss? But to many English speakers, this would feel a little strange. They may feel more comfortable if you just refer to them by their first name. Now the trick is when someone introduces themselves to you, you just need to listen to the name that they use. They're telling you how to address them. The most respectful thing that you can do is to call them the name that they have offered to you. Because if you choose to call them something else because you think that's more respectful, it's kind of showing disrespect by not calling them what they want you to call them. Excuse me goes a long, long way in English. When you want to show someone respect, this phrase is essential. It's always awkward to interrupt someone when they're speaking or maybe when they're doing something else, especially when you're talking to your superior at work. But sometimes it's got to be done. And the most respectful way to do this is to say, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you mind helping me? It's also a good way to ask someone to move out of the way. Excuse me, would you mind if I get past? Oh, sure. It might seem simple, but please and thank you are essential too. English speakers know that as a child, this was one of the first things that you were taught. When I was growing up, my parents were adamant that my brothers and I were always saying please and thank you when we wanted something. We wouldn't get it without those words. In some languages, they're not as important as they are in English. Please and thank you are just so important in English when you are trying to show respect. When you make a really simple request, if it's just pass the salt, add please, please pass the salt. Could you please pass me the salt? Could you pass the salt please? And then of course, when you get the salt, you'd say thank you. And that person, if they're showing respect, will also say, you're welcome. These are all really common phrases that are essential if you are trying to show respect to someone in English. Now, if you remember, at the beginning of this lesson, I said that for English speakers, the way that you show respect is also based on your actions, not just words. So let's talk about some examples. Be on time. Be punctual. Do you know that word? Punctual. So if you're punctual, it means that you're on time. And I know that for many different cultures, it's not really a big deal if you're late. But in most English speaking countries, people place a lot of emphasis on being on time. It's quite disrespectful to be late and to keep someone waiting for you. So maybe you're late to work, you're late for a class. It's just not that acceptable. So you want to try and be on time. And if you're not going to be on time, let them know. Send a text, an email, make a call and let them know that you're going to be running late. Five or ten minutes might be okay, but anything longer than that and you're showing disrespect. Another important and respectful action that people in English speaking countries really value is listening. 
So if someone is talking and you start checking your phone or doodling on your notepad or talking to a friend, that is being disrespectful. And so in this situation, it's your actions that is speaking much, much louder than words. Don't push in. Waiting patiently for your turn is a hallmark of respect in English speaking cultures. If you push in, you're sending a big loud message to everyone else who's waiting that you don't care about them or how long they've been waiting. Now, I know that in some cultures, it's completely acceptable for older people or certain people to move to the front of a line and to kind of jostle in front of someone. But this is extremely disrespectful in Western cultures and in English speaking countries. It is seen as very polite and very respectful to offer your place to someone who needs it, but not to push in because you're older or because you need it. You would always ask politely. Usually I have a little challenge at the end for you, but for this lesson, I'd like you to share what is respectful and disrespectful in your culture. So down in the comments, can you tell me how you show respect in your native language or culture. Do you greet or address people differently because of their age or their status? And what actions are seen as disrespectful? I think it's fascinating that we all have different ways of showing respect in our different cultures through language or through our actions. But it is really important to understand and to learn how to show respect in different cultures. And of course, make sure we're not being disrespectful. So I hope this video has given you some new ideas about how you can show more respect in English and given you some great tools to use to greet people respectfully, to address people respectfully or in the right way, and showing respect through your actions, the things that you do. So you know what to do now. You wanna take these tools and go out and test them out in the real world. And if you haven't checked out these lessons here yet, I think you should, you'll love them. Have an amazing week and I will see you next time.